Hi. Anna and I are back in our third and final video about the double slit experiment, where we'll be explaining entangled probability waves. In our first video, we learned that pairs of diffracted waves are formed using the energy from a single seed wave. What comes through the left hand slit is twinned with what comes through the right hand slit. The pairs of diffracted waves are entangled, with their states being correlated and remaining aware and connected to their twin, regardless of distance. When one half of the partnership encounters an environmental factor, the other half also reacts. When the electron detector was used by the left-hand slit, it only detected electrons 50% of the time, despite there being an electron there every time the gun was fired. The 50% of the time that electrons were detected forced both halves of the diffracted wave to materialize as a particle at the detection point. The other 50% of the time saw both halves of the diffracted wave materializing adjacent to the detector and in front of the right-hand slit, half the time in front of one slit and half the time in front of the other. The diffracted waves are also probability waves that will transform from a pair of waves into a particle, at the place with the greatest likelihood of this occurring. In this case, the possibility was a 50-50 split. If we remove the electron detector and fire a continuous beam of light at the slits, we observe multiple bands of light on the back screen, corresponding to an interference pattern. When we direct the beam of light at just one of the slits, the light still passes through both slits and creates the same interference pattern once again, resulting in multiple bands of light on the back screen. Using the electron gun to fire individual electrons at a single slit gives a result that is initially quite surprising as the pinpoints of light on the back screen seem to appear quite randomly. Over time, however, the pinpoints of light form the same image of multiple bands of light on the back screen. Each seed wave creates two diffracted waves that are entangled probability waves, able to transform into a single particle at no specific location, but on the likelihood of where it is most probable for them to appear. The probability of wave superpositions provides the likelihood of the wave being realized as localized points of light, in the right location and also the correct density to make the central band the largest and brightest, and the adjacent bands diminish in size and luminosity as their distance from the central band increases. Although the points of light on the back screen appear random, they are actually following the rules of probability introduced by Girolamo Cardano in the 16th century to predict games of chance. The three modern laws of probability can't predict the exact location a particle will arrive at, but the math does calculate the likelihood of where a particle is most favored to appear. In this case, the most probable location for the electrons to appear is at the central point. The following most probable location is either side of the center, and the least probable location would be the extremities, furthest away from the center. When we continuously shine a beam of light on the slits, the pattern on the back screen appears immediately. However, if we were to slow down time enough, the pattern on the back screen would appear in the same fashion as it does when we shoot individual electrons through a single slit. Just as water is made of many individual molecules of H2O, so a stream of electrons is made up of many individual electrons. Admittedly, they move pretty fast, and the individual electrons are too small to see, but this is still how they exist. Even when there is a stream of electrons, each electron is still a seed wave for a pair of diffracted waves, that are entangled probability waves. Things just happen very fast. That's the end of the third and last video of this series, explaining the double slit experiment, and we hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to pay us a visit at www.quantummindcontrol.com.